slave market of Avaris, crown city of Egypt, home to the Pharaoh, God to his people, welcomes the chief steward and the head of Pharaoh's guards, the most honored Potiphar! Fine slave, sir. Look at that fine head. Look, look at those shoulders. Look at that back. Those arms. He is perfect. Ah, teeth. <laughs> Young. <laughs> He's healthy enough, but probably never done a hard day's labor in his life. Ah, but he can be trained, master. He, he's, he's submissive, he's obedient. You'd do anything without a whimper. And he knows his place. Never opens his mouth except to pray. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, boy? Answer the master. And to whom are these prayers addressed? Which gods? Only one, my lord. Only one god. Must be very poor indeed. <laughs> well, boy. My one God provides all my needs, my lord. Well, he hasn't done very well for you now, has he? <laughs> Superstitious lot, my lord. These what? Semites. Semites? Semites. But when they are not praying, they work very hard. Hard workers, are they? Yes. I don't know, I don't know. What do you think, Overseer? I can knock the piety out of him, Master. I know that. When I finish with him, you'll need a city full of gods. He's young. There would be ten more good years in a slave like this. Always amusing. For a good price, I'll take him off your hands. He, he wants it! Did you hear that? He wants it!
three pair. You bathe each day. The mistress likes her slaves clean and silent. She sleeps 16 hours a day. Remember that. Before work each day, we give praise to Amun, father of all gods. And praise is how you begin your life here. Praise to the all-powerful Amun. 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 I thought you were pious, boy. Are you too good to praise our God? No, Master, not too good. And what? I've... I've only ever prayed to the God of my fathers. <laughs> well, you won't find him in Egypt. Don't you think you could use Hamon's good graces? I need workers, boy. Not holy men. I just have to teach you to learn respect for my gods. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Now sleep, all of you! seem very powerful to me. Are you ready to praise Amun yet? Huh? Not ready. <laughs> you spill the water! Refill the urn. Now. It's a fight you want, is it? Huh? That wall, not this one. Quiet, man. It is a slave who is right. They do go here. The soil over there is too porous. The shrine would sink in a month. We'd both lose our heads. Keep to the plan, Zedman. Follow the dimensions exactly as I have written. It's simple enough.
Huh? It's no good to me. I can't read, idiot. I can. Slave who could read. According to this, we begin here. That slave, who is he? Joseph the Semite, mistress. And he understands drawings? Yes, mistress. Explain his bruises. Well, I, uh... A slave's life, mistress. His lot is no different than any other. Well, it should be. A good foreman would see this is a special man. My wife wishes to compliment you, architect. The garden is an absolute marvel. It's quite lovely. Thank you, mistress. I wish only to serve. You've served well. I owe you a special gift. Name a prize. If it's not too forward, I should like to buy one of your slaves. The one who can understand drawings, the Semite. Potiphar, I thought you said you favored him. I did. Yes, and the good architect is correct. We underuse a slave of his skills. His manner is gentle, quality lost on ordinary labor. Bring the Semite slave. Semite, here. You tell me I did well the day I purchased you. I am grateful, Master, that God chose to be gracious to us both. What? Surely you remember, Master. He speaks incessantly of his God. I'd be careful if I were you. You worship as you like in Canaan, but in Egypt, only Pharaoh, son of Ra, is God. Is this insolence, boy? No, Master. Good. I serve you with humility and honest labor, but I cannot deny my God. A slave who insists on his own ways. What do you make of that, wife? <sighs> We have enough fools who pander to us. If the estate is to grow, an honest slave who can read drawings and cipher would be a valuable addition. Especially if we taught him our own writing. You see? The respect Pharaoh's chief steward commands at his own home. Slaves instruct him on religion. His wife tells him how to run his household. His wife keeps her wits about and draws attention to what she sees as good. And you see the slave as good? They say whatever he touches flourishes. Is this true? It is, my lord. Do you have a name? I am Joseph, master. Joseph, son of Jacob. <laughs> Joseph, son of Jacob. Do you think you could bring some order to my household if I brought you out of the fields? To be out of the fields, master, I can do anything. Then out of the fields you shall be. We'll see just how matters flourish under your hands, or the hand of your guard. <laughs> uh, you'll have to name another prize.
we've already got as much in store as the whole of last year's harvest. And there's still plenty left in the fields. Joseph, how do you do it? <laughs> Ednan, I don't create the crops for harvest. Must be. I know Purifar thinks you do. Why else would he dress you in robes as fine as these? Clothes mean nothing. I'm still a slave. you to a position where you can tell me where I belong? No, mistress, of course not. Then be still. You have some dust on your shoulder. Here, let me splash it off for you. provides for me. Me with all that is his. The only thing I cannot touch is you. How could I betray your husband's trust and sin against God? We understood each other. Oh, I understood you. But I think you misjudged me. So, <laughs> I've decided to give you a second chance. Stop!
Where is he? What my wife's maidservant ran to tell me, is it true? Would you have me call your own wife a liar, Master? Yes, yes, of course you did. Of course, my love, but the Pharaoh has first call on his chief steward's time as well, you know. Anyway, anyway, I'm here now. I'm here now. And we'll right any wrong that has been done. I, I was alone. And he, he came here. He came to my chamber. And what excuse? That's exactly what I said. He just laughed at me. He said he needed no excuse, that he was your chief steward, and that I had to do what he said, or, or it would be the worst for me. He grabbed my arms, he forced himself upon me. I, I screamed, and I, I pushed him away, and I, I scratched wildly at him. You scratched him? Yes. With the power of the goddess best dead with me, I drove him out! I see. I want the full measure of the law, husband. The full measure. I want his death. Go, leave me with the slave. Come. I thought I could trust you. But you can, Master. If anyone approaches, keep your hands behind you. Thank you, Master. Now explain yourself. How, Master? She accuses you of the vilest crime, Joseph, and demands the full measure of the law in vengeance, which means your head. And a man guilty of that crime would deserve nothing less. So you deny it? Yes, of course. But who would believe a slave pleading for his life? I deserve better than that from you. I've treated you more like a son than a slave. Trusted my entire estate to you, made you the law of my house in my absence. You a slave! Your lands prospered under my hand. Which is why I'd rather not see you dead. Take me years to find another like you. Is there nothing you can say in your defense? Only if you allow me to speak openly, as though I were a free man. So be it. But on this occasion only, and no one must ever know I allowed you such a liberty. You know you can trust me. I would never betray you, not after all the goodness you've shown me. Wouldn't you call forcing yourself on my wife a betrayal? Of course I would. And I repeat, I would never betray you. You're saying my wife's a liar. That's not my place, Master. But whatever happened to her was not by my hand. I could not do such a thing. No, no, you couldn't. It goes against everything I've ever seen in you. By all the gods, where is this now? When things are going so well for my house. Give me a reason to believe you. When the blood runs hot, a man forgets his acts have consequences. I have seen the evil that comes from rape. It is hateful to me and an abomination in the eyes of God. Proving this isn't the way of a man like you. These are old memories, Master. Thoughts of a better time before my slavery. And thoughts of a great pain. 
If you value your life, Joseph, you'll share them with me. I was only a child. And a happy one in so many ways. <laughs> During a long and hard journey, the Lord, our God, watched over us and brought us to a fertile plain near the Havite town of Shechem. Joseph, gather the others. Here, my father Jacob said we should raise our tents. Quick, father says must come. There were my ten brothers, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Dan, Niftali, Gad, and Asher. Issachar, Zebulun. It's time, it's time, it's time! And there were his wives, Leah, who bore my father's first sons. Rachel, my mother, the one my father loved most. And the handmaids, Zilpah and Bila. And my sister, Dina. It was a happy time, Master. The feeling we had finally come home. The Lord is truly our shepherd. He has fulfilled the promise made to me at Bethel and has led us safely back to the land of my fathers. The Lord is my God, the God of Israel. El Elohe be Israel. El Elohe be Israel. El Elohe be Israel. I am Hamor, king of Shechem, which lies behind those walls. This is Bera, my counsel, and this is my son, also named Shechem, so there be no doubt as to what the future holds for our city. I am Jacob, also called Israel, and these are my people. We come in peace in search of a land our God promised would be home for us. I see. And which God is that? We have only one. Just one? You must be a people very short on feasts. Our Lord provides. Indeed he does. Indeed he does. It was to him you dedicated the sacrifice? But where's the idol? I'd like to see a single god who could provide for you as well as this one appears to have done. We keep no graven images. Even so, we know he is always with us. You'll find we're friendly people. And if you also come in peace, we welcome you to camp near our city to find the home your single god promised. We come only in peace. And of course, we intend to pay full measure for the land and the use of the spray. Just name the price. One tenth of your grain and of your flocks, and a third of the animals increase for five years. <laughs> and I thank you for your kindness. We shall be worthy neighbors. 
Neighbors, yes. Strangers, no. In a week, we honor the goddess Astarte. With a marriage followed by a grand feast. You must join us. But we're so many. Then, at least some representatives. Your sons. Perhaps uh, the young girl here. Your invitation is kind. Count upon some of us being among your number. I don't like it. They're fat townspeople. I say we keep our distance, and if they give us trouble... Always a sword, Simeon. Is the hard way the only way you know? It's the surest way. No, the only sure way is the way of the Lord. As he has brought us thus far, he will continue to guide us. child of yours just keeps telling me that he's almost ready. Are you all right? Yes, it's nothing. Go. 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 It's, it's all right. Go. You must take better care of yourself. There's no need for you to be doing this heavy work. No, it's better that I work here with the others. There's enough anger boiling under the surface as it is. Under the surface is where it will stay. Why else settle here, even pay more for the land that it's worth, if not to give you a chance to rest before you give birth? Because there's also proof that the promises are coming true. We will inherit the land that God promised to Abraham. I know that you accepted his terms so that I could be settled when I have our second child. But Jacob, the others know it too. Rachel, I've made no secret of my love for you. I never have. You're first in my eye and my heart. Second, Jacob, second. Joseph comes first with you. My dear. You're Jacob's daughter, aren't you? Yes, I am. Let's sit here. Now enjoy yourself. This is a feast.
right, my dear. Don't worry, I'll see to her. You need a quiet moment to gather yourself together. You'll be fine. I'll take you to a cool room for a rest. You need to rest. Lie down here for a while. You'll be fine. Don't be frightened. It's only me. Yes. I mean, I'm not frightened. You're perfectly safe. Nobody as beautiful as you could ever really be in danger. You're a woman who can have anything she wants. Yes. Well, not really a woman. Just a girl, really. No, a woman. Whose face haunts me at night, whose whose smell makes my head spin. Please, I have to go. I shouldn't be here. This is exactly where you belong. With me. Hmm? Stay away, brothers. Simeon! <laughs> There's no excuse for what my son did to your daughter, to all of you, other than that he was drunk with love. Whoa! No, 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 no. The crime shames us, violates all laws and traditions. No love can come from violence. I gave you my trust, my friendship. Please, Jacob, listen. I'm asking for your daughter. I ask for her in marriage to my son. I'll do anything, whatever you ask. But I beg you, let me marry Dina. Your people and mine can be one, Jacob. We will take your daughters as wives, and you will take ours. Then you'll be strangers here no more. That you seek a peace that can wash away the stain of violence is good. And appreciate it. But our traditions and beliefs demand that we can only marry those who worship our God. And our God alone. He's a good God, your God. We see his presence among you, see how you prosper. We watched your sacrifice to him. We respect your beliefs. And we can learn to worship as you do. And you can embrace all our rituals. We both have much to think upon. Until tomorrow, perhaps. Until tomorrow, then. That simple? They take our sister for a whore. And the reward is we embrace them, make them family, masters of our women's dowries. 
not if I have a say in it. But you don't. None of us do. This decision is for our father alone. I've heard enough. You're like the women clucking away. Good night, brothers. He's right. It is father's decision. Yes. But what happens after that is something else altogether. Go on. Accepting our rituals means all their males must be circumcised. And if they are, they'll be sick. Weak. At our mercy. Get to the pastures. Spread the word. We'll need every man. Three days is what it takes for the fever and the weakness. By the fourth morning, it'll have passed. Along with our one chance. Yes. Well, Israel, have you thought upon it? I have. And I see great wisdom in your offer. But have you considered what you must do to marry amongst us? Circumcision is a harsh demand to make of grown men, Jacob. But absolutely necessary. It is a sign we bear on our flesh of our covenant with our Lord, a proof that we embrace his commandments. Only then can we be allowed to be united through marriage. So be it. Our men shall be circumcised, and we shall be united in peace. A new and strong people.
Madness! Insanity! How in your hearts could you have done such a thing? Ruthless, merciless. Is this the good way, the right way? You have brought ruin upon us. Someone had to defend Dina. She can't be treated as a whore. She was to be treated like a bride. You have broken the peace and used our traditions for vengeance. Now Shechem's neighbors will join forces against us. We're so few in number. Gather our things. We must leave this place. We must leave this place! Gather our things! And so we were forced to leave the land that held so much promise. We went up to Bethel, where my father had once erected a monument to God. And again, God spoke to him. As my father told me, the Lord said, Be fertile and increase. A nation, an assembly of nations shall descend from you. Kings shall issue from your loins. The land I gave Abraham and Isaac I now give to you, and to your offspring to come I will give this land. You have another son. Rachel? Rachel? Stay awake, Rachel! Jacob! Rachel? My sister! Rachel! She's dying! <gasps> Call him Ben Oni, child of, of pain. Spend a moment with me. I have work, Ruben. But I have things to tell you. Important things. Perhaps tomorrow. You know this is my last night. When Jacob returns, I must go out with the herds. No. So, this is my last chance to speak to you privately. 
That's impossible, Reuben. I belong to your father. For now, Bela. But I am the eldest. And all the concubines that belong to him now will belong to me sooner or later. I thought you should know. I should send them both away. Go! How could he do this to me? How dare he do this to me? Reuben seduces Bela, Rachel's maidservant who bore me children. Bela is like a mother to Benjamin. Your sons give me nothing but grief, forcing us to leave Shechem like, like thieves, forcing us to take Rachel on a track that, that kills her. And now this! He was wrong. I know that. But once you speak to him... No more words! Things must change. Reuben is my firstborn. Your first son. No more words! One phase of the moon... Then you return to help with the harvest. Be careful. Be alert. While you are gone, Joseph will be in authority. You will hear his words as if they were mine. Joseph! Is this a game, Father? I am the eldest. And the one who shows me no respect. You and Bela shamed me before the entire camp. Simeon! And Levi betrayed my word at Shechem. If my sons will not honor me, I cannot honor them. One for slaughter, if you like. Me, never. Come on. Oh. Father specifically forbade us from. Oh, well, he's not here, is he? He's not stuck out here alone, baking under the sun, living on dried fruit. Here's a nice fat one. who will stick to our ribs. <laughs> <laughs> but what will you tell Father? He won't find out. At least he'd better not. No, wagging tongue. <laughs> he'd lie to him. Oh, 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 oh. Not our fault. The poor little lamb strays off and gets mauled by a mountain lion. Oh. Oh. Understand, <laughs> little brother? What difference does it make? He's got more sheep than anyone else in Hebron. Right. But father, put me in charge down of the sheep. And be quiet. Joseph, have something to eat. <laughs> it's only a lamb. <laughs> Poor little thing, mauled to death by a mountain lion. <laughs> eat. I'm not hungry. Look at the hide. 
Any fool can see it was killed by a wild animal. My close look. Hey! <laughs> 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 right? Brother? Do you take me for a fool? I've been a shepherd my entire life. I know the problem shepherds face. And I also know their tricks. Father, we... Silence! Now take it away! Get it out of my sight! At least now we know what to expect from Joseph. He's a spy. <laughs> he certainly looks like a prince. So tall and strong. <laughs> oh, Jacob, it's beautifully made. If only his mother could see him now. It's wonderful. Surely I don't deserve it. None of his brothers have anything this fine. None of them deserve it. He does. He has proven his loyalty and responsibility. He has earned the coat, just as he's earned the succession. Now, leave me alone with him. Go, all of you. Go. I'm honoring you, Joseph. Naming you my heir. Next in line as head of the tribe. You can count on all your sons, father. Some more than others. Simeon, Levi, Reuben. I can never forget what they did. The coat is a mark that you will carry on the line. When you wear it, remember, it is a robe of honor. Now, get some sleep. We have a lot of work to do. The harvest starts tomorrow. <laughs> Joseph, tell me again what our mother was like. She was gentle, kind, loving, and very beautiful. More beautiful than Leah, Silpa, and Bella? Yes, much more. Is it true that I killed her? Of course not. Where did you ever get such an idea? I heard some of the women say that she died because I Foolishness, Benjamin. That's not why she died. Why then? I don't know why, Benjamin. People are born, live, and die. Even the stars fall and die. And the sun sets every day just to be reborn the next morning. I wish I'd had no mother. I'd never have let her go. It's not that simple, little brother. Hush now. Go to sleep. Are you going to sleep in your new coat? Yes. I love it so much. Harvest. Hard work.
So, then, we all began to bind our sheaves and brought them together and set them upright. And as soon as they were on end... But don't stop now. What happened? Then, your sheaves all prostrated themselves. They bowed down before mine. That's it. I'm taking all I can. Boy's gone crazy because of father's promises to him. He already thinks he's our master. I also had a dream. In mine, there were 12 piles of manure. The smallest one walked and talked and told tales. No. Be serious. I've had enough of him. It's time we had this out. Tonight. After the day's work. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what father thinks about this. So we all began to bind our sheaves and brought them together and set them upright. And as soon as they were on end, their sheaves bowed down before mine. Do you hear that, father? He dreams of being our master. This has to be stopped. Now, that Simeon is as foolish a thing as I've ever heard. Should I order the boy to stop dreaming? Dreams have meanings. And when God intends for us to understand them, he'll make it all clear. Until such time, all we can do is listen. Joseph, you spoke of another dream. Yes, Father. Tell us. i better not, I think. If God gave you a dream, you must share it with us. I dreamt the sun and the moon and the stars paid homage to me. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Am I the sun, perhaps? Surely not. Your mother the moon, your 11 brothers the stars, I mean, should we all bow down to you? <laughs> now you've listened to this madness, perhaps we can go back to the way things were, the way things ought to be. Yes, I'm sure you'd like that. But Joseph's dreams do not change what happened at Shechem, or with the lambs of the fields. Dreams do not change my decisions. sending you to see how the flocks are doing, not to a feast. <laughs> Son, you're getting older, bigger. And where once your brothers might resent you, as you gain strength and position, they begin to feel very threatened by you. I want you to try and make peace with them. Yes, Father. That's also what I want. But sometimes the anger is... Time will ease that if you're more careful of their feelings. Shows if they're different than you are. They're all brought up together like a pack of lion cubs. You and Benjamin are the children of my old age. You were given more attention, perhaps, but your brothers see that as more love. We both must help try to make them see the truth. Understand? Yes, Father. Good. Then go safely and with a steady pace. You should find them within a two days' journey. Each night grows colder than the one before. We have another cycle of the moon before we can return. I'm in no hurry. The only thing waiting for us at Hebron is our new master in his ah. wonderful coat. Come, little sheaves. <laughs> Bow down before the great man, Joseph. <laughs> Come on. Bow! <laughs> mercy! Mercy, master, please! Have mercy upon us! The wild animal tore a little lamb to pieces! <laughs> please, please! Oh, we are innocent, oh, great Joseph. Please have mercy upon us! <laughs> no, my brothers. I'm in no hurry to see him again. It's peaceful here. Unless he comes looking for us. I think we should move west. What makes you think the pastures will be any better somewhere else? We'll move west tomorrow, to the region near Dothan. 
The grass will be fuller there. Listen to him give orders and predict what we'll find. <laughs> Must have been a dream. Ron's in the family. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I dream about is women. But I do know that if we move on, no one will know where we are. And no one will be able to spy on us. I agree. Let anyone who wants to find us have to dream where we are. <laughs> <laughs> What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers. They're pasturing the flock somewhere near here. They moved on. I heard them say they were going to Dothan. Thank you. Are you sure they went west? Last night, I dreamt I was on one of those big ships that dock in Jaffa. I had three women. One had red hair, the other gold, the third... Your dreams don't count. You're not Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Father wasn't so pleased with his last dream. That's right. Yes. What if they are prophetic? All of us kneeling down to him. Father, too. Sickening! Stop it. It's only a dream. We'll end up bowing and scraping to him, crawling to beg for favors. Stop it. What is it? Here, brothers. Look, the dreamer himself. And in the coat. I swear I could rip it from his back. Father sends you fresh food. I say we kill him. What? I say we kill him. It's the only way to be done with him once and for all. Hold yes. your tongue. Don't even think it. No, no. Simeon is right. To kill him? Never. If it's to teach him a lesson, then throw him in a pit. But you don't spill your brother's blood. Why not? It could happen. A long journey by himself. Yes. Thieves. Or a mountain no, lion. wait. We tried this with the lamb. Father saw right through the lie. Imagine what he'd make of this. The fact that he caught us in the last lie would make this one all the more believable. Yes. He'd never expect us to lie a second time, especially about Joseph. Brothers! Well, this is the only chance you'll ever have to be done with him. That's right. To assume our rightful place once the old man's gone. Let's do it! Let's do it! Let's your mind! You can't spill a brother's blood. Have you thought of the curse which will fall upon us if we do this? Stop it! Stop it now before it's too late! Stop what? Ignore him. Don't speak to boys who come to work in groom's clothing. We come in search of more tales to tell. Father wants a report, and he thinks I'm the one to do the job. He told Forget me... Forget what he told you. You report on me, and it'll be the last thing you do! Simeon! I'll do as Father instructed. <laughs> Simeon, stop it! I'll do as Father tells me, and your warning smells of too much... Water. Hold him! Remember that when the time came to act for ourselves, you weren't there. No, I wasn't. Perhaps I'm just not as big and brave as you are, brother. Are you letting him go? 
But what if he tells our father? He won't do anything. Not Reuben. He stands the most to gain from all this. With Joseph gone, who else will our father put in line to replace him? He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you sitting and moping like women what's done is done now let's get on with our own business the boy is our business was brother was there's no turning back now and if we pulled him out from the well where you helped me throw him and have him tell father what we did at least he's not dead well, I mean, we could always tell father we are just trying to teach him a lesson and father will teach us a thing or two. The flocks are his, the tents, the food, everything. I worked too hard to be disowned and left with nothing. No, brother, we'll have to see this one through. Because what our father doesn't know can't hurt us. There's not much grazing left in these fields. Simeon, I think it best if you and Levy take part of the flock to fresh pastures near Shechem. So you can fish out the boy and throw the blame on us. <laughs> Never. Do something, Simeon, before we all go insane! You should have killed him. Shut him up. You want to fight me, brother? If that's what it takes. But you're not going to kill him. And you're not going to fish him out. If that's the only way to avoid a brother's blood on my hands, then fish him out, we will. To avoid spilling his blood, you'll have to shed mine. If you can. But I'm a reasonable man. I'll give you till dawn to come up with another suggestion. My light traders. Now the boy must be killed before they hear his damn whining. No, no, no. They're the answer. Then how? They can take him for a slave down to Egypt. Then at least he'll live and our hands will be clean. If he escapes, comes back and tells father what happened. Ishmael and Egyptian slaves don't escape. They pay for him. There's money in it for all of us and no blood. <laughs> 20 shekels, not a piece more. In silver? Of course. Done. <laughs> <laughs> What? What is it? Please! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help 
Come to save him. I won't have his blood on my hands. It's too late for that. on the road. I must have gotten lost. A wild animal. Oh. No! 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 What's left to me if Joseph is dead? Joseph! Joseph! Here then, Master, is my version of events. And may the Lord, my God, stand by me as I speak only truth. And desert me if I lie. If you lie, I will kill you. It was the last day of the Harvest Festival. The gratitude to the gods. I set about arranging the house, believing it to be empty. Mistress? Joseph. I thought we understood each other. Oh, I understood you. But I think you misjudged me. So, <laughs> I've decided to give you a second chance. Stop! house is my home now. Tell me about your father. 
He once said he was a prince. Does he have many herds of animals? Servants, fields? Yes. So he's a powerful man. Do you think he's happy with his wealth? I don't think my father's wealth brings him much joy. He could see me again. No, your freedom is within my gift. Yes. But I can't. What a thing, God. You know you want me. Look how you're shaking. You want me as much as I want you. As I swear before the Lord my God. Summon the household. Good. Let them all hear him sentenced to death. heard the reports and weighed them. The slave is guilty. Here then is my decision. As I say it, so it be written, so it be done. The slave is to be taken to the Pharaoh's prison and held there at my pleasure. The jailer is to report to me weekly on his treatment and his progress. Thus is this matter now closed. Pleasure? What about my honor? What honor? How dare you? I know you, wife. I know you. You don't understand. <sighs> Whatever you believe of me, You let him live. How can you humiliate me like that? 
Because one humiliation deserves another. Wife. Anyone who knows Joseph also knows that if he swears by his God, he's telling the truth. What is more important to you? His God? Or my good name? The truth? Yes, that's what matters. Well, then, you might as well set him free and complete my shame. Wherever he is, whatever happens to him, he is free. Because his God is with him. about this? The warder said only to expect two new prisoners. The excellence of your work here is becoming common knowledge. They say the prisoners have never eaten better. The warder's never been richer. The pharaoh has never had to spend less to keep his jails running. Ten times a day I'm asked how you do it. God blesses my work, master. 
as I've seen for myself. And I know that one day he'll see me gone from this place. Well, he'll have to deal with the Pharaoh first. I'm not so sure that on speaking terms. As you see, two very fine specimens. Fine garments, royal eye tattoos, and of station and breeding. Fat one is, well, was Pharaoh's baker. The scrawny one is cupbearer. Important men. How did they end up here? Accused of theft. The Pharaoh's bracelet of the sun, the mark of the true sun god. It's gone, missing. And Pharaoh's seers and prognosticators say that one of these two is the culprit. Then their lives are over. Probably. But you never know what can happen. And in case they ever get out of this place and find themselves restored at court, it would serve you well to serve them well. You understand? Completely, Master. You do this well, Joseph, and you can give me a valuable ally when the time comes to plead your case with Pharaoh himself. May your God be with you. I am Joseph, my lords. I have been instructed to attend you during your stay here. Are you the warder? No, my lord, his servant. Ah, oh, you must be the Semite who does the warder's work for him. I am honored that you know of me, my lord. Huh? Yes, the court knows how well you serve your masters. And their wives. <laughs> There are many stories that have no truth, my lord. Are you calling Potiphar a liar, slave? No, my lord. Are you calling his beautiful wife a liar? I accuse no one, my lord. Really? Well, I accuse you, slave. I accuse you of staining Potiphar's wife's good name, of calling Potiphar a liar. Guard, guard, come here. Beat this man with your whip. Careful, my friend. We are in his prison. His prison? He's a slave. Potiphar will thank me for punishing such insolence. Don't look to this slave for permission. I serve in the court of the Pharaoh. God on earth! Do as I tell you! The name of Potiphar! You will not slander the name of his wife! He will praise me for upholding his honor! Slave! 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 They say this season's market will be bigger than last. I hope so. It gets harder and harder to scratch out a living. Judah, we don't have the animals to prosper. You know that. You need good, rotting males, healthy she-goats, ewes. I won't for... return to my father's camp. I can't live with Jacob's sorrow. He still mourns the loss of Joseph, and the entire settlement is a pool of grief. As a widower, I have enough of my own.
I will give you a camel water, master. Now there's a sight. Oh, a Canaanite who hides her face. They're always bewitching. It's a strange custom, but it adds to the mystery. Traveler, lie with me and ease your mind. <laughs> While lining your pockets. Who can put a price on a moment's escape from the troubles of the world? I have no money with me. My friend is a recent widower. And while he may not have money with him, he does own fine flocks, perfect animals, the softest fleece you've ever felt. Though I can't say what someone like you might have felt. I see no herds. They're at the market. I could bring you a sheep on the way back. Tomorrow. And until then? Only my word. Then you can leave me your staff and seal as a pledge. Tomorrow, when you bring the fleece, I return them. Life is hard on you? A barren daughter-in-law that buried my first son. People die. They do. But as is the custom with my people, I forced my second son to marry her so that his brother's wealth would not be lost. And he too died. Misfortune indeed. You have other family? Eleven brothers. Once there were twelve. But the second youngest was taken by a wild animal. And ever since not a day passes, but my father sheds a tear at the youngster's memory. His sorrow was so thick, I had to leave and start my own encampment. You grieve as if the boy's death was your fault. Never. In no way! Why would you even think such a thing? No injury intended. You're a very fine woman. Thank you. Until tomorrow, then, when I bring you your fleece and redeem my staff and seal. Till tomorrow. Pay homage to Potiphar, chief steward to. Pe Peace be upon you, master. Call the door, Edna. The door. Come. The warder tells me your distinguished guests aren't sleeping very well. It seems their sleep's troubled by dreams. They're not alone. Strange dreams, full of science. It's 
soon as I learned of this, I came myself. Because I know of your gift for reading the messages of the night. Hence a chance to redeem yourself by interpreting for them. You can't remain silent now that they know you have the special gift. How do they know? I'm due back at court. Pharaoh's men work night and day to retrieve the bracelet. They'll have it before long. I hear you have the gift of second sight. At times, Master, when God sees fit to grant it. How low have we fallen, listening to the ramblings of a Semite slave? The ability to interpret dreams is a gift from God. Then why don't you see how well he could do for you, Vintner? I intend to. Be seated, Joseph. Here is my dream. I was in a vineyard in the countryside. There was a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches, one of which began to bud. Now, no sooner had it budded than it blossomed, and its clusters became rich grapes. I had Pharaoh's cup in my hand. I picked the grapes, and I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup. And then I handed the cup to Pharaoh. Now, can you interpret? This is what it means. The three branches are three days. In another three days, the Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. Then you will hand the Pharaoh his cup as you have always done. Rest easy, your days here are numbered. Can it be true? <laughs> now listen to me, slave. I, too, had a dream. There were three wicker trays on my head. In the top tray were all kinds of pastries for Pharaoh, such as a baker might make. But birds were eating them off the tray on my head. Give me its meaning. I am sorry. I cannot interpret that dream. You can. I know you can. You're hiding something from me. Tell me what it means. Very well. This is what I believe your dream to me. The three trays are also three days. In another three days, the pharaoh will lift up your head as well by hanging you from a gallows. Then the birds will eat the flesh from your bones. No! The Pharaoh's bracelet has been found. The warrants have been issued. What does it say? She promised she'd be here! More to your good fortune, she's not. You've kept your end of the bargain. If she's not here, then you get the sweet memory of her bed and get to keep your animals. I gave her my staff and seal as a pledge, remember? Come. I think I can find her home. Ah, 
I am most grateful for your judgment in this matter. I always knew, even in the darkest days, that I could always... Yes. I trust my master's stay here was made as easy as possible. Yes, yes. Considering the circumstances. everything you've learned, Benjamin. The table of the descendants of Terah, who was 70 when he begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haron. Father, you know I have the lines of our family completely memorized. Shouldn't I be helping my brothers pen the flocks? Their backs are strong enough for the job. For you, this is more important. You have to carry on the line. But I'm the youngest father. Reuben, even Judah. I've spent a lifetime showing me they're not up to the task. It would have been Joseph who would have carried on the line, but my other sons. It was a wild animal who took Joseph. You can't go on blaming the others forever. We must take our signs from God. In my heart, I know Rachel was called to give us the next in line. And with Joseph gone, that means you must keep our traditions alive. Maintain Abraham's covenant with our Lord. Blessed be his name. Now, young man, back to the tables. And the sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. And Isaac begat Esau and Jacob. And Esau, who was called Edom, took Father! wives among the Canaanites. Father! Father! Quickly! It's Judah. It's a car. It's a car. It's a car. Little Benjamin, you're not so little anymore. And my father. My father, Jacob. Welcome to my, our camp, to you and yours. I am surprised to see you. I couldn't stay away from you, Father. Especially now, when my clan faces a problem that needs a wiser head than mine. What sort of problem? Tamar, widow of two of my sons, and betrothed to Salah, my third is with child. And Sarah is the father? No. And she refuses to say who she laid with. And no matter how hard we press her, she stays silent. Then by custom, she must be banished. But by Canaanite way, when a woman lies with a man other than her betrothed, she must die. What should I have done, Father? I, I gave her my firstborn in marriage, and he died childless. So I insisted my second son marry her, as his duty to the family. Still, she remained barren. Then when he died... You promised your son Sella, as is our custom. But I kept delaying the marriage. The woman's cursed, Father. 
She buries husbands before there are sons to replace them. I've lost two boys I loved. Should I have risked a third? I know the pain of losing a child you love dearly. I know it well. Yes. She'll speak of anything you ask except the father of the child in her stomach. And she's unafraid. This is not our problem, Chick. That much is true, Judah. You left this camp and established your own line. You must be responsible for yourself and the decisions you made. We'll take her back to our camp. There, by Canaanite custom, she must die. We leave at first light. Fine looking flock. Well, there is room for some outbreak of fever among So what do you have, a knife? You think that by killing me, you can save your own life? You do me a favor, whore, by trying to spill my blood. You justify my own decision to see you executed. did it because I wanted a child. This child that is rightfully mine, a son to continue the name of my husband, Anne. Your own son and firstborn. But you didn't give, sell it to me when it came of age as you should have done. You're a very courageous girl, Tamar. But not brave enough to, <laughs> to face death. That won't happen. I have enough to answer for. The crime of taking your life for something I have done is more than I can bear. You were right and I was wrong. I should have given you to Sulla. The only sin there is belongs to me. You will live to have your child and raise him as a mother should. Living in your own tent with respect and love. The gods must be blinding you. A fool can see I shed no light. The pharaoh is not well. Physician, attend the god on earth. It's not my body that ails. 
If you knew your science, Vizier, you'd see it's my heart that weighs me down. I'm beginning to wonder if you know your art. If the Pharaoh is in pain, then let him speak of it, and the answer will be his. Dreams. I'm haunted by dreams. I dreamt. I dreamt I was in the great river, communing with my spirit in the heavens. Near me were seven wonderfully fat and gentle water cows who seemed to float along with me. It was serene, so very serene. But we were not alone. Horrible, starving cows suddenly appeared, and the thin, wretched cows ate the sleek, fat cows. I woke in a cold sweat, and to my horror, when I finally got back to sleep, I had a second dream, just as frightening. In this dream, there were seven plump ears of corn growing on a stalk. Then, seven blighted ears, meager and scorched by the east wind, sprouted teeth and devoured the good ears. What can these dreams possibly mean? They can't be a good sign. Let us begin. A cup of wine. might be expected from the messages to God. There is a balance in these holy dreams. First, the sacred life-giving Nile, and then the divine presence of the omnipotent Pharaoh himself. The healthy cows, and then the lean cows. The ripe ears, and then the unripe ears. I know what was in the dreams. I had them. Your job is to tell me what they mean. We, we, we do not know, Majesty. How can you remain silent when you know there is a man who can ease your Pharaoh's mind? I dare not, master. Pharaoh's mood is black. I dare not remind him that I was ever in his disfavor. Come on, man, don't be a fool. But I am a humble wine bearer, master. It is for you, Potiphar, the chief steward. It is for you to speak up. More wine! May I speak with you, Pharaoh? Only so others may not hear. You have the dreams of your Pharaoh interpreted by an alien slave? Sire, the Semite slave interpreted both this man's dreams and that of the baker. He saw the Pharaoh's hand in our dreams and predicted his judgments accurately. Well, this slave of yours, how is he called? Joseph, sir. Bring me Joseph, the Semite from the dungeon, and tell him nothing about my dreams. I order you, speak! What are you doing? Please! 
Truly, the Pharaoh is greatness itself. But, sire, my faith decrees I can kneel only before God himself, even on pain of death. <laughs> Come forward. Take heed, magicians. Whatever else, I know this man won't lie to me to save his life. Look upon my face. But surely, great Pharaoh, this is forbidden. Only to people who know I'm God. Since you hold some primitive being in high regard, I expect that you can look upon me without burning up. Try it. I'm told you've learned the secret of reading messages of the night. Interpreting dreams is not a thing to be learned, Pharaoh. It is a gift from God. Careful! One mention too many of this God, and you'll be at his side with your head under your arm. So, you've been given this gift? I imagine we shall soon see, Pharaoh. Your life depends upon what we shall see. Now listen carefully. In my dream, there were seven cows, fat and sleek, and they grazed peacefully. He's a very beautiful boy. Yes, he is. Yes. Do you know what his crime was? I've heard the rumors, but I don't believe it. He doesn't strike me as a fool. And everyone knows that Potiphar's wife deceives him. Never seen such poor cows in all of Egypt. But it was impossible to tell they had eaten the fat cows, for they looked as wretched as ever. Was there a second dream? We have told him nothing, sire. Yes. In the second dream, there were seven ears of grain, beautifully ripe, then sprouting up behind them were seven withered ears of grain which devoured the ripe ones. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he intends to do. Yes? Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. The seven fine cows and seven ripe ears of grain represent seven years of plenty. The seven wretched cows and seven shriveled ears of grain are years of great want. There will be seven years of famine, my lord. Madness. Madness. As if my brother, the sun, and sister, the moon, would send me messages only a slave could read. What if I take him from my sight? Get him back to his dungeon and keep him there until I decide how best to deal with him. Husband, another dream to ruin all our sleep? No, the same one. 
This is too important to ignore. I'm lost, wife. Help me. Me? And risk your anger? No, I'll keep my own counsel, my lord. As an appear, on the other hand. Yes. Let me guess. She's so taken with this foreign slave. Oh, yes. Nothing escapes Pharaoh's eye, young woman. She thinks he has the answer. By your own word, Lord, we know he does nothing against his conscience, even on pain of death. And you yourself seem reluctant to see him hanged. There must be a reason you held your mighty hand, spared him to live to see another day. I've thought long and hard of your reading of my messages. Have you? Yes, Master. And? I am certain that Pharaoh has been blessed by a warning from the Lord himself. So, assume then that your reading is accurate. Is there nothing we can do to prevent this disaster? Yes, Master, there is. How? Pharaoh must select a wise and honest man and set him above the land of Egypt. He must see that Pharaoh's overseers collect a fifth of all that is produced during the years of plenty and store it for use during the years of famine. In that way, Egypt will not be destroyed by the drought. Impossible! Storing seven years of grain. It's impossible. Is there no other way to avert disaster? No, Master. Nothing like this has ever been attempted. So, a fifth of all the harvest would be entrusted to Pharaoh. Yes, Master. All Egypt would be required to pay you this tribute. It would call for a man of exceptional talent. That excludes each of you. Potiphar, perhaps. The answer is obvious. There could be no better man for this job than this man himself. <laughs> Can we find anyone endowed with the spirit of God as he is? I think not. Well said, wife. Now, hear the word of Pharaoh. Ra on earth, God as man. You shall be my chancellor. And all my people shall respect your orders. Only this throne shall set me above you. I make you the governor of all of Egypt. I set you over my house, my people, my entire kingdom. Without your consent, no man shall lift up hand or foot in all of Egypt. Your name shall be Zaphonath Panea. And this fine woman shall be your wife.
The Pharaoh is Ra. He sees into the depths of every being. God has seen and spoken. This time your God's blessing makes you master, even of me. I trust you'll treat me kindly. Excuse me, but what is my name, my new name? I have forgotten it. Zaphonath Penea. Zaphonath Penea. What does it mean? The Savior. Am Savior. I pleasing to you? Yes, yes. Greatly. If you will permit me, Joseph, I'm sorry, Zafanath Panea. In this great task, you'll need someone at your side, as you were once at mine. To serve thee, Master, would be a high honor. But my sins against you are many. On your feet, Ednan. Forgiveness is greater than vengeance. Compassion more powerful than anger. As I myself have learned. May your God watch over you. Like old Egypt. My life depends on it. Go now. No. as a child to have so beautiful a mother. Have you decided on a name for your son? He shall be called Manasseh. 
which in my tongue means causing to forget. And God has made me forget my hardship. I doubt that you've forgotten the house of your father, Joseph. Jacob would be pleased to learn his son has become the second most powerful man in the world. And your beloved brother Benjamin would be pleased as well. I wonder what sort of a man Benjamin has become. Perhaps he too has a son. But it's not for me to know. Not yet. God in his own good time will decide. My place now is here, with you, at Manasseh. Manasseh! Ephraim! Ready? Ready! <laughs> Manasseh, Ephraim. <laughs> you should be learning the ciphers. Season started well. The Nile flooded, but the rains didn't last long enough. If it goes on like this, there'll be no crop to speak of this year. It's begun. God promised. are clogging but they'll hold and for a while at any rate there'll be water to drink but the grain runs low two maybe three phases of the moon and we'll be forced to eat the animals instead of feeding them once they are gone father and without grain for us and the animals starvation kills us all unless well Hera my old friend and ally says that the reports of vast stocks of grain and fodder in Egypt are true. It is all well and good for the Egyptians, but why should they care what happens to us? They don't. But according to here, they do care what happens to our money. He's already sent his caravan laden with silver and loom work to trade. As if an Egyptian trader can be trusted. Private traders! Their pharaoh has set one man above all others to supervise all his affairs. You deal with him. We are not people who measure our wealth in silver. We can't carry fields to Egypt. The animals would die before we got there. We'd better move eastward. Asher, don't interrupt. Over the years, the tribe has earned some silver and gold. I've kept it because I believe that one day God would show us a use for it. Could there be a better use than this? No, I think not. But it's a long trek, and the roads are filled with thieves. Which is why you must all go. Properly armed, you'll find there's safety in numbers. 
all of us? And who will tend to things here? There'll be nothing to tend if you don't go. All of you. Except for Benjamin. But father... Enough. You're the last link to Rachel left. I will not see you lost as I did Joseph. Prepare the animals. You leave at nightfall. I'll give you the silver then. First he raised Joseph above us. Now Benjamin. And so be it. We'll not tease God a second time. Yes, Master. It's just, well, this man's dialect. I know the tone. Never mind. Was... Give him what he needs. Go, go. Are you well, Zephyr and Aspenair? They're here. I'm sure they're here. Who? My brothers. Your brothers? The ones in Canaanite dress. What should I do, Master? Bring them to me. You, you, you! Come! All of you, come! This way! Bring them all! All of these men! You, you, you! Come! And you! Lift your heads. Look upon your master. They don't even recognize me. Almighty one, have mercy. We come from Canaan, where the drought destroys everything. We bring silver to trade, so that we and our families might survive. Your master, Zephanath Benea, ask why your Canaanite gods do not provide for your needs. We're not like the other Canaanites, great master. We worship our own god but we sojourn in the land of Canaan. The master says you're spies. Master, we're spies. spies. No, master. Our father sent us to, to buy food. The master says no. Your spies sent to see the weakness of Egypt. No, master. We are nothing more than shepherds, sons of Jacob, the son of Isaac. What man would send all his sons on such a mission and leave himself alone? What you see are not all his sons. One other, the youngest. He is called Benjamin, remains with our father. 
A man is fortunate indeed to have such a wealth of sons. Are you sure you speak the truth of your number? There was one other master. A brother called Joseph. But he was taken from us. What enemy would send ten brothers as spies? One or two, perhaps, but ten? Take them! Now! Take them! No! No! no. 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 there today and the Egyptians picked us out to be spies. Oh, fool. Uh, there must be some way to prove he's wrong. What would you suggest, little brother? We probably wouldn't be here if you'd paid him more respect. Oh, more respect. Oh, oh, one or two brothers, perhaps, You're but ten. Stupid. What kind of fool would use oh, an excuse like God. that? Stop it! Stop it! Arguing won't get us out of here. Then what will? Not what, but who? God. Is this his final punishment for what we did? Oh, God! Now we know how Joseph must have felt when we threw him down the well. No! Yes. Yes. Right. We have each other. You left him alone. You! We! We! we put him in the well. All of us! There's no point dwelling on that. For 20 years, you've harped on the same thing. But what's done is done. And one thing has nothing to do with another. Are you sure, brother? Be sick! Lush, you shrewd! Yes, yes, we can't have that. Joseph, are you well? Then what is it? I saw my brothers today. That's wonderful. You always said they'd come to you. <sighs> More good fortune from the troubles. They came to the granary. The drought has reached Canaan. How I wish I could have been there to see their faces when they saw you. The governor of all of Egypt. You would have been disappointed. I've waited all these years, and then they didn't even recognize me. How can that be possible? It's been over 20 years since they last saw me. I was still a boy. Not surprising. Where are they now? in the prison. In the prison? Why? Because my anger was stronger than my compassion. And what will you do with them? My father's people are in need of food. I must send them back. Why not just reveal yourself to them? Because they seem unchanged. No different from when they betrayed me. Perhaps God will reveal a way to test them. How? I'm not sure. Well. I want to see these men to whom I owe my happiness. After all, it was their cruelty that brought you here, gave you to me, saved Egypt. And it's to them our children owe their existence. 
another of your curious insights. But I'm not so sure God is ready to see this thing forgotten. God or you? You must bring them. I have to at least meet little Benjamin. Benjamin was left with my father. I'm sorry. I know he's the one who counted most. But they are all your brothers. Blood of your blood. Your master, Zafanath Panea, will allow you to buy the grain you need to feed your people. These sacks have provisions for your journey, but the accusations against you still stand. Evidence that your story is true, and you're not spies, will depend upon proof of the existence of the one missing brother. But your master, Zafanath Panea, is a merciful man. Thus, he will keep only one of you here. He will be released when the rest of you return from Canaan with that brother. You wish us to return to our father, then journey once again to Egypt? Yes, with the missing brother. That one shall remain no, with no. us. No, no, no! Now go! Leave! And return swiftly with the missing brother. You've probably seen the last of them, Master. It will be difficult for them to keep away. The drought has just begun. The silver they gave in payment, did you do what I asked? As ever, Master. The only proof of our story he'll accept is Benjamin. And the only way to redeem Simeon. But after that, he promises we can trade freely in Egypt. The grain is abundant, the best quality. Is this all the Egyptian asks? Just for my youngest? Is there more to this sorry tale? What is that? The money with which we purchased the grain. What's it doing here? We don't know, Father. Perhaps God... Be careful what you lay at the door of the Lord. Blessed be his name. Blessed, Blessed be his name. name. Now, why? Why did you tell this man I had another son? First I lose Joseph, then Simeon, and you, poor soul, want me to give him Benjamin. Well, hear my words. It will not happen. I will never. Never risk Benjamin to your care. 
Never. But further, Simeon rots in an Egyptian jail like a common criminal. And how do I know Benjamin won't meet that same fate? Or this Egyptian might put you all to the sword. But, Father, perhaps if I went... Quiet, you have no say in this. Father, I cannot leave Simeon there. Please, let me do as this Egyptian suggests. If we don't return, I offer you the lives of my own two sons. Oh, a typical idea of yours, Reuben. If I lose Benjamin, I can begin exterminating my entire family. Is that your grand solution? Now hear me! This is my last son by Rachel. I will not risk losing him. Now go about your business and pray. Pray that the grain you brought back will outlast the drought. Nowhere to go, Father. We don't have many choices left. You know my mind in this matter. We will not talk of it again. Another month and we'll not talk of anything. Soon we will all die. And the line started by Abraham will have vanished. And what would you have me do? Listen for once. Think about what God promised you. Then listen to your sons and see if what they have to say doesn't make sense. Unless you want to see us all die because you're too frightened to trust God. What is this to do with trusting God? Isn't it obvious? He's left you only one way out. One road to our survival. And it leads through Egypt. Egypt is our only salvation, Jacob. of the finest gifts we can offer. Present them to the Egyptian, along with this. Silver enough for double payment for the grain you will buy and the grain you brought back. Have an easy mind, Father. All will be well. I know it. May God go with you at your right hand and bring you back safely to me. silver we found in our sacks. I'm sure of it. But we don't know how it got there. All we need to do is be truthful. Silver? What silver? I know I received payment for your grain. But we had money in our grain nonetheless. Here, we offer double repayment. You owe us nothing. Whatever you found must be a gift from that god of yours. Master, our other brother, Simeon. He's in health. Alive, you mean? Simeon! Simeon! 
end. Welcome to Egypt. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> is that Lillian? The answer to every question is yes. I don't really understand it. But from the time you went away, I sat back eating and drinking like the Pharaoh himself. <laughs> Come. You must be washed before you dine with the master. You will sit here, aside from the master. This is a great honor. Egyptians never eat with strangers. To them, it is considered an abomination. Now, you will sit in the order I tell you. Some young man, if ever I saw one. And I hope a pure spirit. Yeah. Enough delay. Asha. It's a car. Fabula. Zephyr He who guides us on the road of life. Father in good health. Yes, Master. And he sends you these gifts as homage. So this is the brother of whom you spoke. Benjamin, Master. How is it, Master, that you come to speak our tongue? Have you been to our land? God be gracious to you, my son. Was I wrong to ask the Master how he came to speak our tongue? The master has traveled widely. He understands a great deal. Look, we're sitting according to the order of our birth. Reuben and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad and Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, finally me. I divined the order of your birth by looking into my magic cup. It is a great honor. The master has given you the food from his own plate. Thank you, Master. We eat the same dish at home. In fact, this is the favorite food of my father. Oh, I could have done with a little more sleep. I don't understand. He was so friendly last night. 
Yet this morning he has us run from our beds before the cock crows and sends us on our way. Look, our assets are already loaded down with grain. Return good with evil. What can you possibly mean? You deny stealing from my master? What kind of fools would you take us for? This. anything. You can kill the culprit and make slaves of the rest of us. Why did you do such a wicked thing? Master, we have done nothing. Then how do you explain it? God is punishing us for a crime we committed many years ago. It seems he wants us all to taste the bitterness of slavery. For surely we are all your slaves now. I am not a vindictive man. You can return to your father. I shall keep only Benjamin. No! Do you dare raise your voice to me? Men can die for this. A thousand pardons, Master. But the very idea is unthinkable. Master, I cannot pretend to grasp the meaning of these strange happenings. Benjamin has never stolen in his life. Never. Never, Master. And he's too clever to take a cherished and unique object from a man as powerful as you. Nor do I know how the money got into our sacks on our previous trip. Perhaps it was all the work of God. Master, please, spur the life of Benjamin, beloved son of our father's old age. Losing Benjamin would kill our old father, whom we have already wounded deeply. Take me as a slave in place of Benjamin and allow the boy to go home to his father. No. Benjamin will stay with me. No! I'm sorry, Master. But we must take the boy back to our father. Or die in the attempt. You would rather die a thousand times than see such pain in our father's eyes again. Live another 20 years of wretched cowardice. No, Master! Ah. So you are now ready to sacrifice your lives for one of your brothers? Why then did you not do the same for the other one? The one you said died when in truth you yourselves sold him into slavery. You know about Joseph? How? Because he's alive. Alive? He's here in Joseph this alive? palace. In fact, he's in this room. Leave us. I said, leave us. Get out! Guards! Come!
I am Joseph. Come closer. Don't be afraid. I will not harm you. Am I to take the place of God? Joseph. It is not for me to punish you. You meant evil against me, yes. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. I shall provide for you and for your families, and especially for our father. I am most to blame. you. That is not the lesson the Lord, blessed be his name, has put before us. Perhaps we have learned the meaning of brotherhood, of family, and that wherever we may go, no matter how God's plan separates us, we must always be true to one another, to be family. You must return for our father. Tell him of what I have achieved and move him here with all your belongings. I want you near me in the land of Goshen so I may provide for you during the remaining years of the famine. I have spoken to the Pharaoh. All is prepared. Come to me. Come to me. I'm your brother. I am Joseph. <laughs>
This is my Joseph. My son. My son. Children, Rachel's light shines in their eyes. Come, come, my children. Come that I might bless you. Come. that I have again held you in my arms and laid eyes upon your sons. Now, truly, I can die in peace. There will be no talk of death, my father. Then God will it. And then you will take me back to Canaan, the land God promised Abraham. And it will be as the Lord promised. Our descendants shall be known as Israel and will be a multitude of nations, each brother unto himself, a tribe of Israel. <laughs> 